In this video, we are going to see some applications of interpolation using ESMA Studio, taking advantage of some of the pre-recorded pre functions, or predefined functions, actually, I should say, available in ESMA Studio. And what does interpolation um, have to do with? Suppose that you have a table of data, you know, from X, Y, some physical properties or some other data set where you know the y depends on x and you're given a vector of values of x with the corresponding vectors of values of y. You're given, for example, these discrete points of x and the corresponding discrete points of y. But you want to find what is, for example, the value of y when x is equal to 3.2. So what you do is you look at a way to obtain the corresponding value of y when the, the value of x is between these two. And so that's what interpolation is about. And we have um, a, a three different functions that, that can be used in SMAT Studio, the Akima spline function, the cubic spline function, and the linear interpolation. If you're interested, you can find information in Wikipedia. Just simply find these particular references here and it will give you the information. I'm just going to show you the operation of the function. For that, I'm going to generate some data. I'm going to define this function as a, um, like a oscillating decreasing amplitude that I'm uh, um, oscillating function with a decreasing amplitude, of which I am going to produce a range of values of x. And since we're talking about range, I'm going to mention in this particular video these three interpolation functions and the range functions. The range functions, I'm going to create a new um, a new archive, a new file, and and in here we're going to use uh, uh, demonstrate the function range. The function range requires a starting number called n, and an ending number. When, when you type range, if you if, if it were typing text, you just type range and comma m. But what you get is this, this expression. And if you put the equal sign to this expression, well, in this case, it's not going to produce anything because the variables haven't been defined. I'm going to actually use the function range with numbers here, say that from 3 to 7. It produces a column vector with the numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In other words, this starting number, this ending number, in increments of 1. Now, suppose that you want instead um, to put increments of 2. In that case, what you do is type range. The initial value, the ending value, and then... The next value that follows to uh, that follows n with an increment delta. For example, you would say range from uh, 5 to 21 in increments of 2. So you have to indicate that the second element here, which is actually the third element that you type, is the number that will follow the first number with the given increment. And so that's how the range's functions work. And I'm using it here to produce a vector of values of x. I'm going to call it xd. Um, for the, this will be my x data. And so I'm going to produce a range of values between 3.2 and 7.2 in increments of 0.5. Just to uh, um, demonstrate how to do this, I say xd column range 3.2 comma 7.2 comma I'm sorry, 3.7 equals. And that's how you get your x data. The y data is obtained using a vectorization of the function f that I define up here. And that is as simple as saying yd dot f of xd. And then you go for this vectorized function. But actually, that is not going to work because it's only vectorizing xd. 
what we're going to do is put XD space bar so we get the entire expression on the right hand side selected. Let me try that again. And equal. And then we say the equal sign, and we have evaluated um, a vector of values of YD using that particular function. So we have our data XD and YD. And to present it as a table for the purpose of this presentation, as I mentioned, you want to um, create a, a matrix using the augment XD, YD. And this is just to show the, um, the, 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 the data as a table, not the not purpose of that. And then here we're demonstrating the use of the three interpolating functions that I mentioned before, the Akima spline interpolating function, the cubic spline terminal function, and the linear interpolation. Linear is the simplest of them, of them, but it may not be the best. So we're going to show you some of the results here. I have my data then XD and YD uh, in vectors. Our press representative here is the matrix. And let's say, um, let's say like uh, in, this, in this case, XI is equal to 5, and this is the call to the function that will give you for XI equals 5, which will be the value between 4.7 and 5.2 you get a value of y of 1.21, 1.248, which will be between this 1.09 and 1.27. I'm going to use a different value. Let's say um, a interp xd and yd are my vectors that I know. And let's say that I want to know what is the value for 6.5. As you can see here, uh, 6.5 will be between 6.2 and 6.7 and should be between 124 and 124, 134 and 125, and I'm getting 127.62. If I use C interp, that's the, um, the cubic spline interpolation, for that 6.5 I get, oops, sorry, equal, 1.2972. And if I want my linear interpolation, I'll interp 1.2880. So this is another example of interpolation. In this, in this case, I define xi and use xi as an um, argument here, and then I give values to the vector y and so on. Now, um, I'm going to delete these examples here. Just uh, formatting this. Um, this says extrapolation is the operation of predicting the value of x if is out of bounds for the x data. For example, in this case, xi equal 8 will be out of bounds because the largest value is 7.2. But you can still do the interpolating function, and it's going to give you some value. But the validity of that value is not as strong as the validity of the interpolation itself. This is called extrapolation. Now, suppose that you want to interpolate values of y for a vector of x corresponding to integer values between 4 and 7. So you create a uh, range called xi from 4 to 7. And then we're going to produce a, um, a for loop to interpolate the corresponding um, values. To, to create this for loop, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to type it right here for you. Temporarily, I'm going to open this area. You simply go click somewhere in the worksheet and then find your for function in the programming panel. And then in here, we type k, which is the index. And then n, as I uh, obtained here, is the number of points. I define as n equal 4. So in this placeholder, I'm going to type range parenthesis 1, comma, n. And that will give me my range of value of 1 to n. Since I want to produce three, three results here, what I'm going to do here is click on this placeholder and click on the line function for programming. Click a little bit to the left of this one and find this. Sorry, right, let me try that again. Oh, 
Okay. So you drag that down to produce the three entries, and then you start typing YIA bracket K spacebar column A interp X X D Y D, which are my reference vectors, and then X I bracket K. Okay, the others will be very similar. I'm just going to copy this thing here. Do Control C, Control V, and then change it for a C and C and change the function for Sinterp. And then here is going to do Control V again and change the A for an L. Or I'm sorry, Y A L sub K linear interpolation of a guide K. And that's exactly what I use. I'm going to delete this. Delete this. I have indicated here the step-by-step -step production of the of the little short code here. In case you want to try it on your own, just um, just uh, pause the video and follow the instructions in your own as my studio file. And so I have created vectors of Y I A, Y I C, and Y L. Y I L. All you have to do here is just type the name, and it will give you the corresponding vector. Just going to delete these. These are shown in here. And if you want to show them as a, as a matrix, you can do it like this. For the purpose of plotting, I'm going to create a matrix MA, which is augmenting XI with YIA, MC for the cubic interpolation, XI with YIC, and ML for XI, YIL. And then we're going to produce these plots. To show you how the plot gets produced, I'm going to show the first one right here. Just click, go to Insert, Plot, 2D, and then in here, go to this function, the System of Violet of Equation, and type the name of the of the matrices, which are M, M1, or ML, sorry, and MA. MA, if you remember, is the the data for the original function. Now that looks very small, right? And so things that we can do is just hold on to your left mouse left mouse button and drag the zero zero to those this corner. And then we're gonna hold the shift key here. I'm sorry, first click on the on the graph, hold the shift key and then use the 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 mouse wheel roll it up to span the X range. Now we're getting off the range. Now we're going to hold just the left key and drag this down so we can get this, get this as close to zero as there, as uh, close to the left side, sorry. Holding the shift key again, the, well, we drag it again until we get something like that. Now the vertical scale is, is too small for the graph and so we hold the control key and roll over the mouse key, and then you start seeing then the difference between the original data and the linear interpolation. No, oh, okay. actually, I got the wrong reference here. Instead of ML, is M1. M1, there you go. So you can see the continuous blue line is the original data set, and the red one is the um, interpolation is in the the, the first uh, interpolation there, the Aikin. If you change this to, say, MC, then you get the other interpolation, the cubic spline, and if you change to ML, you get the linear interpolation. And with that, we conclude this particular video on interpolating functions.